Hello again. Brian back with another video. Today I'm going to be talking about some different projectiles that I use for slinging. I haven't done a video on slinging in a long time. It is something that I still do. Uh, I still carry a sling with me wherever I go. Um, no matter where I am in life, I always have at least one in my pocket. And whenever I get an opportunity in a wide open field, it's really hard to not grab a rock and chunk it as far as I possibly can. So just first off, you'll notice I've got a little shoulder bag on. I've used this one for years. Um, I'm gonna step back a little bit and show you how I have it worn, just because it's pretty heavy, but to keep it from slinging around, because when you're, when you're slinging a rock, your body is moving quite a bit. I actually have a, a carabiner attached to the shoulder strap, and I just hooked that to my back belt loop there. So now, now that I, I've shown you that, I'm going to disengage this so I can bring the bag up into camera view. And these shorts have slightly wider belt loops, so that takes a second. So I've had this pouch. I bought it when I was a kid at an Army-Navy store. It's got a belt loop on the back of it. And the old school turnbuckle style latches here. Not really a turnbuckle, but anyway, they turn, right? Um, and this used to ride on the back of my webbing belt, kind of like a butt pack. And I carried all kinds of, you know, camping stuff or whatever in that. Now I use it exclusively for my slinging projectiles. And I wanted to kind of go through and show you some of the different things that I sling and the different weights, right? So starting off at the top end of weight, and these are the heaviest projectiles that I ever sling. Um, and I don't do it a lot because it's pretty heavy as far as wear and tear on the body. And the targets are these. These are both steel ball bearings. These are 18 ounce ball bearings and this is a 16 ounce ball bearing. So solid pound of steel, a little over a solid pound of steel. Obviously, uh, when you put that on the end of a string and you go to sling it, uh, if you do that a lot, it put a lot of wear on your, your shoulder and your elbow. So. I don't do these a ton, and I don't normally do these full force. I just let the momentum do the work. But it's a lot of fun, and if I ever get a chance to do this, I've done it once and I didn't get a chance to videotape it, but I had an old cinder block, and I slung one of these at it until I hit it. And it took me a while because my accuracy is eh, right? But I did hit it, and it just demolished the cinder block. So I would, I would love to get a shot of that at some point. But that's the steel ball bearings. Uh, working our way down in weight... Uh, these are the first projectiles that I made myself. I had an old jello mold for making Easter eggs, and I started using concrete to cast. So I have a bunch of these, and I do like the oblong shape, the biconical shape, as it were, to sling with. It's my preferred shape. The way that I sling does put a rifle spiral on it, so I've got my best distance recorded with one of these, and they weigh four ounces. Now they are a little bit bigger, Right, definitely um, more wind resistance. And if I was able to get a four ounce biconical projectile made out of lead, I'm guessing I could probably beat my best distance. But my best distance with this was 240 yards, which is fair. I mean, I'm not a professional. I don't practice that much, but I was pretty impressed with how far that went. Most of the ones that I have, and if I just reach down to my bag, I can find one. I have spray painted orange um, because they are really difficult to find if you want to get them back. And after all, I put all the time and effort into it. I, I do like to recover these whenever I can. Some more made projectiles. I've got some lighter ones like this. This is just clay, a little clay ball. This weighs two ounces. Um, they sling pretty well. I used to work uh, in a job where I did a lot of digging. Um, and I would have to you know, dig a small hole in the ground, put stations in the ground, things like that for termite baiting. And whenever I struck really, really good clay, I would just ball it up and, and use it to make things. So I have a lot of these that I made. And then I also have my preferred projectiles, which are these. Again, we have that biconical shape, right? For the, I didn't use a mold for these. I just formed the clay with my fingers and you can actually see finger marks in that if you look carefully at it. I just formed them and let them air dry and let them harden on the dashboard of my truck in the sun. And they are remarkably hard and they fly really well. And these weigh between three and four ounces. I've got a couple of them in here. 
think this one's three ounces and this one's four ounces. They're not perfectly symmetrical. I didn't put them in a mold of any kind, but they are close enough in shape and in weight to fly very consistently. Now, obviously if you're slinging, one of the joys of slinging is that you can just grab a rock off the ground and you can sling that. So in my bag, I always have a collection of rocks. I prefer oblong, you know, your, again, your egg, your biconical shapes, as smooth as possible. Uh, all those little dents and pock marks in this stone, uh, the more irregularity it has in it, obviously, the, the more it's going to affect it aerodynamically. It also adds sound, which is kind of fascinating. If you have a really square-edged rock that you sling, it makes a buzzing sound because of the spin, which is pretty cool. And then I've got, like, your bigger rocks. Like this would be my preferred weight. I'll sling one of these. Again, they're a little bit heavier. Uh, this rock here is it right at eight ounces, right? So it's a little heavier. I'm not gonna sling it as far. I'm not gonna sling it as hard, but it makes a really nice splash if you're swinging into a lake. And lastly, I have a bunch of golf balls. Um, whenever I go to a golf course, I'm not great at golf. So most of my time, I spent on the golf course I spent out in the woods trying to find my golf balls and in the process I found a bunch of other golf balls. So I have bags full of golf balls. The problem with golf balls is they're really light, which is great for golf because you're swinging a stick and you're hitting them. But when you're actually swinging with your arm, I find that it's too light for me. It doesn't hit the sweet spot. I can sling one and I can sling one for a pretty good distance, about 200 yards, especially because you'll put a backspin on it and all those divots in there will help give it lift and make it carry further. But for me, it's it's about my mechanical efficiency. My swing hits its stride right in that four to five, even six ounce range. These are about an ounce and a half to two ounces. I don't know, I haven't weighed one in a while, so I can't remember exactly. It's just a little bit too light for me. They're still fun. Um, and they're easy to find because they're white or bright orange or whatever else. <laughs> they're apparently not that easy to find because I find them out in the forest and people, yeah, I guess people don't really take the effort to get them. It's probably the reason they're still there. But uh, yeah, so those are different things that I sling. And just to kind of give you an example, I do have a couple of my slings on me here. I don't know if you all noticed when I walked up, I just kind of tuck them under my belt if I'm gonna be slinging a lot. So I can just pull it out. This one is braided out of uh, just acrylic yarn. A nice thick loop there. And then I've got the, the pouch sewn into it. And this one doesn't have, most of mine have a tassel on the end for that whip cracking sound. This one doesn't have a tassel. Uh, it just has a series of knots for me to grip into. But I'll just show you how that nests. Very snugly in the pouch. Hugs it really well. I'm not going to sling this here because I don't have, there's not a direction I can sling this in in which it would not end up in somebody's house. really break the whole social distancing thing that we're doing right now too if I had to go apologize to somebody but that's one and then here's my other sling this is my one of my daily carry slings this one stays in my pocket you can tell by the way the cords are that they're used to being folded up because so I'll just take it and roll it up like that and stick it in my pocket um, this is probably the smallest sling that I own uh, but I really, really like it, especially with a, a lighter stone, like a four ounce or even a three ounce stone. Um, I can get a lot of velocity out of this because it's the length of my arm, exactly. And I don't know what it is about that, but I've tried longer slings, and for me and the style of slinging that I do, this one seems to work the best. So it's the same style where it's braided, though this one is nylon cord. You start the braid in the middle, and then you join the two pieces together to braid this section you split them back out again in the middle and sew the pouch and then i slowly taper it down on this end and have a little tassel so the tassel is what makes that popping sound that uh that hypersonic sound barrier crack whenever i do the especially the figure eight method that i prefer so i'm gonna latch this back into my belt because again if i start moving around having a several pound bag of rocks swing around and hit you 
can be a little uncomfortable, especially depending on where it hits you. So I'm just gonna do a, a quick, you can actually do this without anything in it. And this is how I teach people to practice. I've got a video out on, you know, the, the figure eight slinging method, but yeah, you know, just for fun. Let's see if we can get this thing to crack without a projectile in it. A little bit, it doesn't crack nearly as much as it does with a projectile, but anyway. Those are the projectiles that I sling with. Um, I do hope in the somewhat near-ish future, depending on how much time I have, to actually shoot a video on how I make these. I've made a ton of them over the years, but I've never actually videotaped the process. So I hope to do that for you guys. Uh, thank you for watching and for uh, subscribing if you're a subscriber. And uh, we'll see you again soon on the next video.